What's up, everybody? It's Jared with All Things Crime, and welcome to another episode. I'm excited to be here with you today. You may notice uh, things look a little bit different. I got my thin blue line hat on to show my support for the police agencies, as well as my All Things Crime t-shirt. And you may notice I got a little bit of a sunburn today. I was out watching one of my boys do a seven on seven football, and it's a gorgeous spring day here in Utah. And I'll tell you what, with the higher altitudes and the, the sun shining like it is today, you can get burned pretty fast. And that uh, I'm definitely experiencing that. So definitely gonna slather on the sunscreen tomorrow. So wanted to remind you a couple things. Number one, we appreciate all of you that have subscribed both to our YouTube channel and to the podcast. And if you haven't done that yet, please uh, smash that subscribe button. Also share it with your friends, make sure and get the word out that there's another episode of All Things Crime here. Wanted to also remind you that you can have one of these amazing All Things Crime t-shirts and it's uh, pretty awesome. All you gotta do is subscribe to all of our social media as well as our podcast. So that'd be like our uh, Facebook and Twitter accounts. Just subscribe to all those and then share them, make a couple of comments and let us know and we will ship you one of these t-shirts. So definitely do that. And we'd love to get all these uh, t-shirts out that we have now and get them out to you. So definitely let us know when you get that done. So this episode's a little bit different. I was a guest on another podcast and we went over kind of the, the creation of the MVAC and how it was created by my father, Dr. Bruce Bradley, and how we started in the food industry and then moved over to forensics. And so that's how it has to do with all things crime, but it's definitely as a forensics tool, collecting forensics DNA from evidence. It's definitely a key piece in solving crimes, especially cold cases nowadays. It was a great interview though. And I wanted to share it with you just to kind of share a little bit of our story, a little bit about me as your host and hope you enjoy it. Talk to you later, everybody. Hello and welcome. Hey guys, buckle up for a new episode of Buddha is Calling podcast. The one and only podcast made for anyone like you to discover how to live a life with intention and find the true purpose of your life. Whether you're a student, a mom, a working professional, an entrepreneur, or the president of any country in the world, if you are someone trying to find your true calling, you're sure to pick up tidbits of actionable advice when you listen to Buddha is Calling podcast. As we begin this journey with season one, you're in to experience true transformation through personal stories of our guests that include famous life coaches, fitness experts, entrepreneurs, inventors, songwriters, and many other success enthusiasts as they share the details of their life stories and unravel the moments when they found the true purpose of their lives. Stay tuned till the end of each episode where we discuss the changes that you can make in life right now that help you to discover your true calling instantly. So welcome once again to Buddha's Calling Podcast and enjoy the episode. Before we start, make sure you follow us on our social media channels on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at the way Buddha is Calling Podcast to continue being a part of this conscious and elevated tribe. Let's begin. Today we have with us Mr. Jared Bradley, who is a podcaster. He has a podcast by the name All Things Crime. He's also deeply interested in forensics and he's in fact taking the legacy forward with something that his dad developed, which is called the MWAG. It's a popular technology used in the United States and uh, I would like to call upon Jared to share a bit more about that. Hey, uh I'm so glad to be on your on your podcast. Appreciate you inviting me. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Oh, the pleasure's all mine. So yeah, I appreciate the introduction and just a little bit about the MVAC. It's a wet vacuum, so it sprays a solution down and vacuums up the DNA. And mm -hmm. it's being used all over the world to help especially solve cold cases and difficult cases like, you know, if there if there's not enough DNA material there, like a blood spatter or something like that, then they can use the MVAC to get a little deeper, maybe a little wider, whatever bio stain they're looking for, or even touch DNA, if you know what that is. 
and yeah, it's a, it's a fun tool. It's, it's being, it's, it's literally like a carpet cleaner on evidence. I love the parallel that you draw to a carpet cleaner, but only we, we all know that it's a very advanced technology. To start with, uh, you know, of course, uh, we're here to discuss about essentially how you found your purpose, the true intention uh, of your life and how you gathered everything that you wanted to do basis your life experiences so far. Um, we would love to know a bit more about this journey, how it all started, maybe a little bit about backstory about how your dad got into it. You know, I, I'm sure that that's going to add a lot of value. Sure. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, it's interesting. I, I kind of fell into what I'm doing now with the MVAC because my dad invented it and he was a microbiologist. And I, I don't know if you even heard about this. Well, you're probably so young. You you probably weren't even alive when this happened in 1993. The year um, I was born. <laughs> okay, yeah, and well, enjoy your youth. That's uh, it's fantastic. Amazing. So in 1993, in California and Oregon, you know, along the west coast of the United States, mm -hmm. they had an E. coli outbreak, and it was mostly mixed in with hamburger, and so that it sent like hundreds of people to the hospital, a bunch of people went into kidney failure, uh, even six, six children especially died from it. So it was a really tragic happening. And uh, my dad grew up on a ranch in Idaho, if you know where that is. And yes. he, so the, the fact that, that the beef industry was killing children purposely, obviously, but just uh, by default, with it it really bothered him. And so he started analyzing the problem as, as all scientists do. They once they're presented with a problem, they start looking at it and saying, you know, there's got to be a solution to this. And so he started looking for the way to detect E. coli better. And he realized that on the front end of that whole process, they were really looking, they weren't really doing statistically significant sampling. Imagine looking for a small coin in your entire apartment or, or flat and you have five guesses where it is, you're blindfolded. And so you're just kind of randomly looking for this small coin. And, you know, if you think about the odds of finding it, it's really low. And that's kind of the way the food safety industry works is, you know, they do their best, but statistically they really need to do better. And that was one of the things that inspired the MVAC is because my dad realized that if you want to get deeper into the cracks and crevices where even singular cells are dwelling, then you have to be more aggressive with it. And that's where you came up with the concept of, you know, just like if you have a stain on your carpet or on your couch, you don't use a hand broom, you get in there with a carpet cleaner. And so the combination of the vacuum pressure with the solution that's being sprayed down into the carpet will get more dirt. And that's a proven, I mean, it's just common sense, really, that that will get a lot more dirt than what a broom would. And so he then developed the MVAC to do the same thing in the food industry. And so when he was ready to, uh, to launch the product in 2007, mm -hmm. he brought me on. Uh, I had a sales background and there's all, also military applications for like bioweapons. So uh, he knew he'd be marketing this system to the military as well. And plus I was uh, his son. So that all made sense. And so I, he brought me on in 2006. We kind of ramped up things and we launched the product in 2007. And, you know, helping, helping kids to, to not, and this is kind of a roundabout way, but I hope this makes sense. Helping kids to not end up in the hospital because they eat a hamburger to me is something worth pursuing. And, uh, you know, if you've ever seen a kid with kidney failure, it's really tragic. And so that was a huge motivator, not only for my dad, but also for me. And so we went about it, you know, we went at it and we were like, hey, you know, we've got a tool that can help people uh, help their food be safer. And we, we marketed in the food industry for a long time and then realized that it was more sensitive than what they were required to, to do and what they would ever actually use. And so we, uh, around 2011, we realized that we've got to find a market where it's a win-win 
and that's where we kind of stumbled. I, I ran into a college buddy, and this college friend was in the FBI, and I was describing the MVAC to him in the context of, of collecting E. coli and salmonella for the food industry. And he was like, wow, you know, that would have been amazing on some of my crime scenes. So in the process of understanding that, we realized that, you know what, it doesn't matter if it's a skin cell or a saliva cell or blood, it's the exact same process as collecting E. coli. So we took it to a private lab and had them test it for us and say, you know, would this work in the forensics application? And they came back and they were like, yeah, the, you know, this just absolutely amazing recoveries. And so around 2012, we pivoted into the forensics industry and we've been helping solve cases ever since. Beautiful. That's that's a lovely story. I love how the whole identification of the purpose started with something so unique, like something like kids dying impacted your dad so deeply and he decided to actually take action on it. I think most people would just let that news go by and uh, he knew that he had a technology that could make a change and he decided to implement that. Of course, you know, it, it didn't get uh, implemented in the same industry that he was trying, but like you were sharing, he found uses in use cases in military and in other segments and finally ended up finding use in forensics, which is great in itself. Of course, uh, you know, before we proceed, uh, I understand you started working with your dad uh, in 2007 and would love to know a little bit about, you know, the start. Of course, we know that where MVAC stands right now, it's success. It's found its success in the forensics and we all know that, but we would love to know a bit more about the challenges that you faced in 2007 around that time when you were trying to find use cases for the... Oh my God, that's a beautiful story about how your dad eventually, you know, he started with such a, such a sweet thing. It was all about saving lives of millions of kids along, around the world. And that's how he got started. Nobody, I'm sure at the time, even bothered looking at that news or taking action. I'm, I'm glad that he decided to act on something that was so severe and that could have major implications around the world. Of course, we know that uh, MBAC has been hugely successful and it's found its uh, success with the, the forensics. But I would love to know a bit more about that phase right from 2007 when you joined your dad, and I'm sure that you were trying to identify more use cases, what were the various struggles that you went through? Because I, I'm sure that a lot of listeners would benefit from that journey of finally okay. coming to a conclusion that, okay, forensics is the place where we want to implement this. Oh my God, that's such a beautiful story about your dad trying to find his true calling and his true purpose. I'm sure most people, when they heard about kids dying in 1993 with an E. coli break, breakout uh, most people wouldn't have even bothered let alone take action on it so i love the story of how your dad with with the technology that he developed and back tried to find some use case and tried to save uh, lives and i'm sure had it found its in, uh, its use in the food industry it would have gone on to save millions if not billions of lives so the impact was huge and i'm sure and we all know the success of MVAC with, in the forensics right now. But I would love to draw a little attention and, you know, have you shared the story with the audience about what was it like in that period of 2007 when you joined your dad, you had a background in sales marketing and you were a successful professional and you transitioned into something that, that your dad created and you tried to help him uh, with something. So what was that struggle? I'm sure that that would have had its own bit bit of struggle in terms of identifying the exact use cases. So share a bit about the challenges that you faced during that. That was an interesting time, especially for me, because I knew, so I, I was deep into corporate America. I, I was working at the time for Pfizer Pharmaceutical, which, you know, I, every, I think most people know that name is a huge company. And I was, I was on the sales side. I was doing hospital sales and I was kind of working my way to uh, position myself as a, as a manager. And my goal was to be a regional manager uh, with Pfizer. And, but it, the, the interesting thing about corporate America, at least, and, it, and hopefully it's not this way where you are, but the, when corporations get that big, they have a tendency to what we call protect the mothership which means that once you reach a certain level, uh, 
the responsibility of the management is more to protect the company than it is to protect the individual. And it, it, it makes for an interesting environment because you have lots of freedom. You have a, a big expense account to, uh, you know, work with your customers, but, uh, if anything goes wrong, it goes really wrong. And I realized this around 2005 when a friend of mine, uh, who was just, we, we used to say he bled Pfizer blue and. I, and this is nothing against Pfizer. It's a great company, but like most big corporations, they will protect their own and they'll protect their own interests and, and aggressively. And this friend of mine that was just an avid supporter, uh, it wasn't even something that he did, but he got fired for something that somebody else did, but he didn't report it. And anyway, just kind of a long story, but it created an environment where all of a sudden, I went from having these lofty goals and, and thinking that my career path was set, thinking that I was going to be able to be successful in a way that I, I had envisioned, to all of a sudden, those dreams were just dashed. And like most of us, I had a tendency to complain to my dad. And he, um, <laughs> you know, growing up on a ranch, if you know anything about, uh, imagine a Western cowboy. I mean, literally my dad used to, when he was younger, lived in kind of a bunkhouse and would build cows every morning and every spring and fall, he would take the cattle up into, I mean, literally do cattle drives. And so, uh, my, my grandfather was, I, I wish I could, I, I'll share a picture with you if you ever want to see it, but sure, he, yeah, yeah. you know, Cowboy hat, six shooter. He was the epitome of, uh, you know, the Wyatt Earp type. Wow. And so that's just, <laughs> yeah, that's the environment that my dad grew up in. And so you can imagine how well he accepted my, you know, whining and excuses about how horrible my life was in corporate America. And so he was kind of like, well, Jared, what are you going to do about it? And I, I was like, well, you know, I, I, I got to think about finding maybe another career path or something, but obviously this, uh, this path that I'm on isn't as stable as I thought it would be. And so he said, well, come work for me. I'm about ready to launch this product that I've been developing for the last eight, nine years. And I need a good sales guy. And so you're welcome to come work for me. And so I was like, yeah, all right, let's do it. Beautiful. And so I, I jumped. I, I went from being in one of the largest corporations in America to a one of the smallest and, you know, but working for unknown entities, um, you know, regional manager that I never saw, you know, a district manager that I saw maybe once every two months to working with my dad. And uh, we spoke. Now, I, I moved to Utah and he was in Idaho, so we were still about three hours apart driving wise. But, it, you know, I, I went from talking to my dad once a month to literally talking to him every day. And you know, as, as we get older and we, we move out of the house and we start our own families, we have a tendency to separate from our parents probably more than we should. And I certainly was doing that. And it was, um, I, I was really, really fortunate that this whole thing played out because working for my dad became uh, one of the greatest experiences of my life. And all the things that I was pursuing, including success and position in, a, in corporate America, you know, none of that ended up mattering because working, you know, going to work for my dad, just being able to hang out with him. I remember there was a trip up to Canada to a conference that we, we had a whole bunch of equipment. And so we ended up driving the whole way and it was probably, I don't know, 15 hours. <laughs> it was a long drive, Did but you know we saw some, of the, yeah, we saw some beautiful. of the most beautiful mountains and lakes and, and countryside that has to exist in the entire world. But more importantly, I got to spend about 30 hours just hanging out with my dad in the car just talking about life and 
you know, I, I think I was, um, how old was I? I don't know. I was probably 40, uh, by then, you know, close to that. And I, like I said, I, I'd pursued the military. I'd pursued, you know, a, a variety of corporate jobs and was at the time working for Pfizer. And when I, right before I jumped uh, to my dad's corporation. And so it, it was, it was just a, an amazing experience. And I realized then how much I had been missing out by not being around him more. And I, I it, again, it was just amazingly fortunate because two years after I came to work for him, he developed a brain tumor and 10 months later he was gone. So the two years that I had with him prior to that was just, uh, I, I can't put a price tag on it. It was, it's so incredibly fortunate that I wasn't, you know, galloping around in Tennessee or California or some other part of the world while, you know, I could have been working with my dad and getting, gaining those kind of experiences, having my kids be around him, all of those things that actually matter in life, uh, by sheer default, uh, I was able to experience that for a couple of years. So I, I look at that as just an absolute blessing. And I hope, you know, I mean, working with family uh, has its pros and cons. And sometimes the cons are, are pretty big. But uh, I found that uh, working for my dad was one of the greatest experiences out of my entire life. And so I, I don't regret a second of it. And, you know, after he passed, it just kind of made sense that I took over for him. I mean, it's a small company anyway. And so we, we had pretty limited numbers of employees and, and options, really. And so it was just kind of natural that I, I took over and tried to fill his shoes. And I've been trying to do that ever since. And that, so that was in 2009, so 12 years ago. Oh, my and God. And I'm still, you know, that's one of my motivating factors is I want to carry on his legacy. I want to be able to say, yes, you know, I, I took what dad started and I've taken it to the world and I, and I've made it successful and, and everybody knows about the MBAC is my goal. That is such a heartwarming story, Jared. Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm glad that you saw so much value in a, not just the technology, but in the personal aspects as well, you know, personally, I'm sure it ended up transforming you from a corporate guy to a guy who is uh, an entrepreneur and, you know, helping your dad find uh, his way through making him back successful. So I'm, I'm sure that he credits a lot of success for him back to you, no, no doubt about that so uh just moving on to that time when you know i i understand it's very sad that you're uh, about your dad's passing in 2009 when uh you know that obviously had a huge impact in your life uh just want to know a little more about that transition period right from 2009 to 2012 when you found the eventual successful use case the most successful rather use case of the MVAC so far where the industry was welcoming and uh, how finally you know that led to taking your dad's legacy forward the whole story transitioning into forensics yeah the the, the transition into forensics was partly just forced on us you know my my dad's uh, vision was always collecting e coli and helping the food industry especially because the beef industry particularly was so near and dear to his heart. But in fact, I, I had a, a good friend uh, tell us not long ago, we, we actually created a video about kind of my dad's legacy and how this whole thing came about. And uh, one, one of the primary guys that was helping him to test the system uh, on, on beef and collecting uh, adulterants like E. coli and things like that, we interviewed him and, and recorded him for this video and he, his name was, uh, his name is also Jared, ironically, but you know, he said, yes, Dr. Bradley's vision was always helping the food industry, but I'm sure he would be very pleased at the fact that he's, his system, his invention is now helping solve crimes and so, you know, I think back in 2012, and to get to your question, um, in 2012, 
it, it was a it was a really hard transition because we were we were kind of in desperate straits. We were looking at you know in 2011 before we really knew that forensics would be a viable market. We were we were kind of looking at things and saying you know we are running out of resources and every, every I think every company, especially every small company, it goes through this because at some junction you have to generate enough revenue that your investors don't, you're not relying on investors or, or seed money or anything like that anymore. And, it, and you actually have to stand on your own two feet. Your company and your product has to stand on its own in order to survive. And that's kind of where we were. We were basically looking at things as saying, you know, is this really going to be uh, as successful as we've envisioned? And uh, we realized also in 2011 that no matter what we did, uh, we we had heads against that wall for going on five years and realized that it, no matter what angle we approached the food industry from, they just, un unless they were forced to, which they, you know, we couldn't do it, uh, they, they were just weren't going to use our, our system. And so... And yeah, you know that's that's a whole different story. But I, and, I, and I I definitely don't ever want to give anybody the impression that people in the food industry don't care about safety because they do. They're they're adamant about it, and they they go through amazing lengths to ensure that the the food product that they put out is safe. But uh, our product just didn't fit into that. So it didn't matter what we envision. What matters is does the market actually uphold it? You know, it's kind of like uh, I can create as many podcasts as I want, but if nobody wants to listen to all things crime, then, you know, it's, it's just me fulfilling my, uh, my dream of making a podcast, you know, it's not really, uh, fulfilling anything. So, uh, hopefully that's not the case. And <laughs> which is a reason that I'm on with you because obviously your podcast is awesome. And so here we are, but, um, Thank the bottom you. line is. No, no, we've we've heard quite a quite a lot of things about all three uh, things crime, and I love the show. Um, I would rather you know urge my uh, listeners to go check it out, all things crime. If you're interested into you know criminal stories, and uh, please do check out all things crime. And and I'd uh, also love to you know I love this whole transition of how you eventually came and identified forensics as a place to be for MVAC when it couldn't find the success where it intended to of course jared th these are all beautiful stories and i and i'm so glad that you decided to share this and this is the story of you know take not just taking your dad's legacy forward but also living your life with true intention and finding the purpose of your life which is to take your dad's legacy forward to wrap up you know uh, we are we are towards the end of the the final segment of the show Wherein we would love to know a little bit about, uh, you know, what what would your advice be to the listeners? Uh, what should the call to action be for them in order to, you know, which something that helps them identify the true purpose of their life and helps them to live their life with true intention. So any action, to, uh, you know, advise your tidbits on that. That is a, you know, that, that's a tough one, but I... <laughs> Honestly, I would say don't be afraid to jump into something new if what you're doing, if you know, at some junction, all of us have to look at what we're doing and say, is this really working? And is this really fulfilling my life the way I want it to? And if it's not, then it doesn't matter how old you are. It's never too late. So take a chance and go jump into something that you're going to enjoy more, something that maybe will uh, provide for your family better. It's, uh, you know, what you're doing may or may not be exactly what you thought you would be doing in life. And it, it, there's, especially you think about this right here, you know, here we are, we are literally across the world from each other. Yes. And technology is one of those great equalizers. And it, there's so many opportunities that are coming into fruition right now that just didn't exist even just a few years ago. I you just check. I hope I got this. Oh yeah, I got the recording, thankfully. 
I was actually very scared about losing it. I don't know what <laughs> happened there. I just got an update. It was quite scary. Yeah, all of a sudden I was... All of a sudden, I was just talking to myself. Okay, I'm really sorry about this. I don't know what is the issue. It's, this has never happened, so I think we, oh, we, well. we'll just cut to the final section, I think. we just record that. Yeah. Sure. Hey, are you recording to the wet or to the cloud, or are you recording to your computer? I'm recording this to the cloud, which goes on to the server of Squadcast, and I can download the files whenever I need to. And then there's a separate DAW that's already running on the back end. So that is oh, also okay. saving the audio. But then I wanted to yeah. like put this out a bit, like a, a little snippet on the social media and everything. So I thought, you know, we'll do the video version as well. Yeah. Well, I think that's the problem is because it's, it's recording to the cloud. I think that's, it's slowing it down so much. I, I hopefully I'm coming across, I'm not jumping and you know, everything is, is coming across okay? Yes. I hope I sound okay. Yes, you sound you sound perfectly okay. In fact, you know, uh, you sound really good. There's no uh, latency or any lag, and and the whole flow of the conversation is also so natural because you're just it's not about jumping sections. You're just explaining the whole section, every section so well. But I think before we hit record, um, because, you know, I want this call to action to be big for the audience because, of course, you know, four and six is something. I'm going to add a little segment about your podcast also in between, which I can record and add it separately in the audio file. I will do that. I'll just read up a little about all things crime and so that, you know, we can promote uh, you as well to our listeners. But just wanted to uh, check if... Uh, you know, if we can have a specific call to action, like uh, for the audience to implement, because you found your, uh, I think we should record this, don't you think? Oh, sure. Well, yeah, the, I, I was in that, I, my call to action was, you know, if you're not doing what you want to do, then figure out a, a better thing in life. Is that right? That, that's a brilliant that call work? to action. Exactly. Like, you know, uh, explaining it a little with your own personal examples, just elaborating it. We need maybe five to seven minutes of that segment of the call to action. Okay. So just so you know, the, okay. as soon as you hit record, mm -hmm. you're, you're jumping. And so I, okay. So, so the whole, so I can maybe check this with the, with these people. I'll just try to, you know, reach out to the support center because if that is the issue, then you know, it's going to be a problem going forward as well. But thank you for that okay. feedback. I will definitely ask them for some kind of change. So yeah, Jared, yeah. So th that was such a beautiful story about your life. And I'm so glad to, uh, you know, know from you about the different segments, how beautifully you've been explaining uh, right from, you know, your corporate career to being an entrepreneur, working with your dad, spending time with him and also alongside uh, trying to find a better fit for the technology that he developed with the MBAC. And um, I'm sure that a lot of uh, success, you know, the credit to all the success goes to you. Of course, your dad uh, created it. He was the inventor. He was the man behind the, the, the brains behind the technology. But you were one of those people who went on to, you know, create success for the technology. So I'm so happy to know about the whole transition and how you found your true purpose and uh, you're living your life with intention, clearly. Just wanted uh, a little more advice uh, coming from your side. And I'm sure that a lot of listeners would benefit from this. Of course, I'm going to benefit from it. So I'm sure a lot of uh, this is going to add a lot of value to the listeners as well. Uh, just wanted to hear from you. What are your thoughts about, you know, how do you find the true purpose of your life? How do you start to live your life with true intention because a lot of us we kind of had have our own struggles i've had my own struggles in trying to find the true purpose of my life and you know of course i, I keep jumping uh, on different bandwagons as as i move along in last two years of course have been very enriching for me but uh, i would love to know a little bit about your experience and and what would your advice be for anybody who's trying to uh, look for the true purpose of their lives and trying to live it more intentionally yeah that's a great question you know, first of all, everything we go through is, and everybody we meet, every everything that we see, we hear, we do, it's there and it comes into your life for a reason. And I heard a, a number of years ago that every person you meet has something to teach you. And I, I think that regardless of 
who you're talking to or what circumstance they're in. I mean, it can be a homeless person and that person has some kind of an experience that they could teach you something that would be valuable in life. And so I, I think number one is make sure that you're not just kind of bludgering through whatever you're going through right now, because there's something that you're supposed to learn. And yeah, it's, it's, it's hard and life is meant to be hard. And that's because we, we as individuals grow uh, and we become better people through hardships and through struggles and through uh, different, different areas in life that, um, yeah, you know, relationships, uh, different people that we run into different circumstances, even providing for our families, you know, our, our work experiences, our careers, all of those things are designed to help us become better people. And so I, I don't know if that's kind of what you're looking for, but you know, if there's anything that I could go back and redo, it, it wouldn't be choose a different career path. It wouldn't be, you know, try to make more money when I'm younger or anything like that. It would be find people and listen to people more and actually take what they say for, you know, take it more to heart and, and realize that, you know, it, it, again, it doesn't matter what that person's station in life is. There's something that you could learn from them. And I, and I think if I would have done that when I was younger, uh, I would actually be in a better position right now. I, I, I'm not complaining about where I'm at. Don't, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, you know, how many, how many people did I discount just because they weren't, I don't know, they, they weren't wealthy or they weren't um, a CEO of a company or, or some, something like that. You know, it's just ridiculous that we have a tendency to, there, there's a saying, at least in the U.S., it say, don't judge a book by its cover. Yes. And it's, I, I'm sure everybody's heard that. And I, but I think even despite that profound wisdom that's in that little saying, we still do it. And, but, but that's, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in my fifties now, which is crazy when I think about it. I, I still remember being your age and I, I look back at how fast that's gone by and I look like, holy cow, you know, what really matters in life is the relationships that you build, the friends that you make, the people that you treat well and are treated well by them. You know, it's, uh, I, I would just say, you know what, every single person you run into, figure out what it is you're supposed to learn from them. Amazing. That's, that is so simple, but I think the advice is simple, but it's yet so hard to implement, right? Every time, like you were sharing about your experience with, you know, discounting people just because they did not hold a certain tag in the society. I'm sure we all have tendencies to do that. At least I have tendencies to do that, you know, getting impressed with people with big profiles or, you know, maybe on the cover of the Time, uh, Time magazines or something like that or actors or whatever, you know, but we all have our <laughs> kind of fascination to all of that glamour. But um, that is great advice. And uh, I, I, I totally believe in it to be very honest. And I'm sure that all our listeners are going to benefit a lot from this because this is coming from someone who's already seen it and who's implemented it in his life and been so successful at it. So thank you for sharing that, Jared. Uh, that's beautiful advice. So with that, we come to the I end yeah. of the show. Any last final thoughts from your side uh, for our listeners? Anything that you know we possibly missed out on discussing? That, that is one question I ask all my, uh, uh, the, all the guests on the show. So any last thoughts and anything that we possibly missed out on that you would like to add? I, I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? Okay. So should we redo this? Can you hear me now? Uh, you know, it, it's still coming in and out. It's, it's, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. No problem. We'll, do, we'll hit record again. Can you hear me now, Jared? Yeah, a little better. A little better. Or should we reconnect? Like, how do you want this? Can you hear me? I, I, I think it's because you're recording. I, I don't think the uh, reconnecting is going to help. It's going to help? Okay. Okay. But I can, I have captured you quite clearly. I'll share the final version of the file with you later once it's done with the processing. I can hear you and see you quite clearly. There's no issue at oh, my good. end. Okay. Whew. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in like the middle of a recording. Can you give me like five minutes? <laughs> Sorry, no I'm having uh, I'm having some elect electrical work done. Okay. So, okay. okay so, no Can you? 
re repeat that question and hopefully I can. Sure. Sure. Enough. So with that, we have come to the final segment. You know, before we close uh, today's uh, session, we would love to know any final closing thoughts from your side, Jared, or anything that we possibly missed out and we didn't touch upon. So just let us know any, any closing thoughts for our listeners uh, and for the audience. You know, I, I'm just, honestly, this has just been a fantastic experience. I, I think about all the people that I've met all over the world and I now have a new friend in Dubai. So uh, how could life, how could life be any better? Right. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you. You're very sweet. And uh, in fact, you know, I loved having you on the show. And I would really um, w want to urge my listeners to go check out uh, Jared's podcast, which is all things crime. Whether you're interested in cr uh, criminal stories or not interested, go check this out because we have an awesome guy here, right? He's doing some amazing work with the MVAC. And, you know, he's found great use cases in forensics. We all know about the success stories of the MVAC. Um, and the more, more most importantly, he's such a beautiful person. He's such a beautiful soul uh, who's not just uh, living his life with true intention and purpose, but helping others live their lives with true purpose and intention. So that is lovely. Thank you so much, Jared, for sparing the time and uh, joining us for this session today. And I'm sure the audience is going to benefit a great deal with all that you shared on the session today. Thank you so much. Oh, you're too kind. It has been my pleasure. And uh, yeah, I, I hope we can do it again. Sure. Would love to. Would love to. Thank you so much. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Wow. Thank you, Jared. I will send you the final recording of this. This is just getting uploaded to the server all the sessions that we did today. But I truly appreciate your time and, you know, bearing with all the glitches that we kept having you kept reconnecting oh, so i love that <laughs> yeah. well you know we gotta we, we i i hope it i hope it comes out okay because that's you, you're so so kind as a host you're so good so thank you I can thank definitely you i really I appreciate your support and uh, it's it's huge for me because i'm doing this for the first time so you know this the support and, and the kind of support that i got you were so quick to like respond to my post as well so i really truly appreciate that it, it it's well, a I, lot you know, of learning for me personally you know and it's great to see that people who have been doing this for so long they're so patient with it you're being patient with me right now right with with this whole scott cast oh, thing no. so i really appreciate that uh, it's, it's tech, you know, it's nobody's fault. It's just technology. And, yes. you know, the sheer fact that we're literally on the other side of the world from each other and yet True. we're still able to talk and, yeah. and uh, you know, have this conversation is just, I mean, that alone is just, that's crazy. Mind-blowing. But, True. you know, it, I, I've been to Dubai a couple of times. And, really? Uh, you know, I, I think it takes me 26 hours to get, get there. Really? Okay, I never oh, yeah. knew that. I never knew that. It, it takes you that long. In fact, that was going to be my closing, like before I would have closed the video. I was going to ask you, because the buy is open, so there, there, there are very limited cases and 50 to 60% of the population is vaccine. So, you know, it's very safe to travel. So if you ever plan with your family, with your kids, I would love to host you here. That would be amazing to catch up here. Oh, that'd be so fun. Yeah, yeah. I would love to be, you know what? I have three young boys mm -hmm. that are uh, nine, nine and ten. I have twins that are ten. They're almost eleven. And, oh my god! Oh, <laughs> having them, having them in a plane for twenty six hours. Oh my word! Yeah, <laughs> that, what a disaster! I that can would imagine be, but, the lockdown you know, with the three kids. <laughs> yeah, Dubai but, is an incredible city. I was blown away at you know, the construction and the technology that's there and just a way, I mean, what a bustling modern city. Yes. And that's, is that where you're from originally? No, I'm from India, but I moved here oh. two years back. I am working in a corporate role here. Um, so I, I work, so I got, uh, like transferred from my company there was a new project that was coming in for the gulf region and they were planning a setup here in dubai so i took that up i was like i'm not getting married <laughs> so might as well just use some time and <laughs> utilize that to build your career so that's what i did and along the way i i have multiple 
passion so podcasting was just something which recently came up and uh, i enrolled in a course and uh, then i started connecting with wonderful people like yourself and uh, i've been really fortunate to you know get some amazing people to talk on the show so thank you so much for it oh of course yeah that's a, what a great story so yeah in fact i i'm i'm actually starting to work with some people in india as well so hopefully i can get the mbac in uh, india i i think my next middle east country is going to be saudi arabia Amazing. But, you know, maybe I can swing, swing through Dubai on the way. Of course, that'd be amazing. And if you need any help with maybe connections in India, let me know if I, I don't have too many connections in the space that you're in. But, uh, you know, maybe something, maybe even in the defense with India, I'm not too sure, but my dad's in the army. So, and he, he's... he's oh, is he? Okay. Yeah. yeah so, so, but, well, but he's I, in a different department. Hey, but we can. I'm sure that we can get you connected in case required, and in case I can help, would love to. Oh, I'd love that. Yeah, if you could, that'd be great. I, I just, I, I've been through a couple of people that they talk a good game, but you know, when it came down to it, they just didn't perform. And I'm like, you know what? All, all you know, talk, it, but no action. Okay. Yeah, got it. it's like you know these guys, which is really disappointing because I, it's like. I, I can understand if you said, yeah, you know, breaking into the India forensics market is really hard if they were upfront like that. But, you know, they were just like, oh, yeah, you know, we're going to we're, we're going to have units into every lab, you know, in the next year or two. And I'm like, oh, OK, well, whatever. So I, 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 I would love to find somebody that would be, you know, upfront and would actually have the connections that they say they do. So, so that for would instance, be is exactly the use case that you uh, want to have with the military as well, right? Uh, you know, the military. Well, it depends. I mean, it, okay. like military police, absolutely. Okay, got it. Uh, He's but, in the Indian army, it's but gonna I can be, check if there is yeah. something that you know uh, we can definitely because they have their own labs and you know they do a lot of testing as oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. So we can get uh, well but it, it definitely is probably going to be in the private sector before that so okay. um good. but yeah, any 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 connections that you have i'd, I'd love to sure I'd, thank I'd love you to so talk much to I'd, I'd love to share I'll, I'll definitely try to find something for you especially with my dad because he's a little more aware about these things so would love to pass them on if that helps okay Sure, thank That'd you so awesome. much. <laughs> Jared, it's been so lovely chatting with you. I love talking to you. It's it's been so good. Thank you so much. Oh, it's yeah. It's I been will. awesome. You've reached the end of another episode of Buddha is Calling Podcast. Connect with us on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at the rate Buddha is Calling Podcast. Your favorite podcast on finding your life's purpose and identifying your true passion is available on all leading podcast platforms like iTunes, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Do not forget to leave us a review and share your favorite part of the episode. See you at the next episode, where we continue on this mission to help you find your life's true calling.